Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Daniel and together with Barbara I restored the historic sailing ship Flying Coney. Originally we've planned to do an oil change on the engine and the gearbox in this video, but instead we are stranded in Ladystad and you will see later in this video why. So that means no oil change in this video and that meant we need a new topic for this week's episode. So we thought it's a good idea to show you around Flying Coney and show you all the upcoming tasks that need to be done in the near future. I will also go over some questions that show up in the comments all the time. So I hope you enjoy this slightly different video. We are now in the Vauxhall and one of the last remaining tasks in the Vauxhall is removing of the two steel water tank. If you remember, this water tank here started the whole water in the bilge thing one year ago. I'll link a video over here if you want. So we have to remove the steel water tank, cut it into pieces. It's placed directly on the concrete, so that's probably the reason why it's rusted through at the bottom and it's not usable anymore. And we need to get rid of it because we do want to have access to the bulkhead behind it and also to the, to the hull behind here. And then we can remove the last bit of wooden wall paneling as well. On the long run, we've planned to replace the steel water tanks with pre-manufactured plastic water tanks. We are now in the saloon or the former cargo hold and here we have the main task for the upcoming shipyard time. We've planned to go out of the water hopefully next spring and we need to tackle the rust problem on the frames here. A little history about the frames. Flying Coney was built as a wooden warship with uh, wooden planks on steel frames. In 1950 the boat was rebuilt using these old frames with a steel hull. That explains why the frames are far more corroded than the hull blades or the hull cut. So that means we have a lot of work ahead of us. Specifically that means we need to replace the frames everywhere where they are too thin. Then we need to double it or cut it out and replace it. And the area that it's affected the most is down here where the concrete starts. There most frames unfortunately are affected and eaten away. Usually steel underneath concrete is in relatively good shape because there is no oxygen and no water, so there's almost no corrosion. How do we know that? Well, we measured the hull thickness and the hull thickness is great up here. And exactly where the concrete starts, there is the problematic area. There it gets a little bit thinner. Up here it's about seven to eight millimeter. Here it's five to six millimeter. And below the concrete, it's seven to eight millimeters again. Let's talk a little bit more about the Concrete. Why is it there? Do we want to keep it? Well, when they built the ship, or when they rebuilt the ship, what they did was to throw every little bit of scrap metal inside the bilge. And after the hull was completed, they poured it over with, with concrete. Uh, they did it because of three reasons. First, it's ballast. Of course, it's ballast. Second, it gives a flat floor in the, in the cargo hold. And third, concrete was a relatively good method of preventing corrosion. Flying Cone is one of the first examples of a fishing crawler, fishing vessel with a freezer room. There was a lot of ice and the salty fish and all the, the fluid that swept around here uh, was salty and uh, wood have corroded the steel, so they filled it up with concrete. They also poured the concrete a little bit up in between the frames here. I can't tell if it helped or if it just transferred the problem from the floor a little bit up. 
So what we want to do is we want to hammer out the concrete that is in between the frames, repair the frames here connected and make a cut where the, the flooring starts and fill this cut with some flexible bitumen to seal the concrete so that any moisture that runs down the hull cannot get in between the concrete and the hull. Also what we have planned to do on the long run is to seal the flooring with some garage epoxy paint or sealant uh, that no moisture coming from above can enter the concrete. But one last word about it. Usually if there are no big cracks in the concrete, if the concrete is in good shape, it's a good sign and the steel underneath it is well protected and it's future proof and there's really no need to remove more than necessary. We always had the philosophy that the boat needs to fulfill a purpose, especially a project boat. Because if you only have the project and not the fun part of owning a boat, then it's far more difficult to get to the end of the project. And that's the reason I think why 90% of the projects that are on land end up on land and end up unfinished. Our idea was to restore the boat step by step while living on the boat. And unfortunately, after the last shipyard time, we ripped everything out that made the boat livable. We ripped out the galley, the electricity is not usable anymore, we do not have running water anymore, we do not have a toilet, we do not have a shower, we do not have heating. So basically there is nothing left that would allow us to, to live on the boat. So that's the reason why we bought the camper. Not to make camping holidays, we just needed a place where we can live while we work on Flying County. So that's the next big step, to make a nice comfortable place to live in for us out of this aft cabin here. Our rough idea for the aft cabin is to build a new bed. You may think that this is a proper bed, but if I lift it up, uh, you see, there is just a mattress. We also want to rebuild this wall here, rearrange all the cupboards and everything here, run new electric wires, rebuild a basic electric system, build a galley up in the, in the wheelhouse. And the next thing is we also do want to restore the head. Here we have the bathroom or the head and Unfortunately, it's always moist in here and a little bit damp. We do not know why. One of the next steps is to rip everything out here and have a look. Have a look at the bulwark, have a look at the steel walls behind here, remove the insulation, have a look at the wooden deck below here. So that means more ripping out fun for you and after that we can rebuild a nice bathroom. Of course, all things we do here in the aft cabin are temporary because on the long run we've planned to lower the aft deck to bulwark height, which is about here. There is enough space underneath the flooring here, so there is enough space that we still can keep an aft cabin. Our plan always was to do things once and to do it properly, but we realized that we are in long-term project so uh, we have to to find a place to live in to recharge the batteries and to stay focused and not to burn out and lose the energy however we can't wait to rebuild the aft cabin and have a nice place on the boat to live in again So I promised you to tell you why we are stranded in Lelystad. Just the other day we wanted to do an oil change on the engine and on the gearbox. And I had a closer look at the overall condition of the engine. The good news is uh, the condition is not all that bad, but we had all the time this nasty coolant leak on the port side of the engine. 
And I just found here this hose connection, which connects two engine parts here. And this hose is completely exploded. So here's the cooling, coolant leak. And that ruined, that really ruined the last bit of phase we had into this engine. So I think it's just better to do a complete engine overhaul before we trust our lives into this engine. Luckily, one of our Patreons offered us to help us with overhauling and maintaining the engine and the generator. So what needs to be done before he can help us with the engine? We need to clean up this engine room. That means removing old wires that are not necessary anymore, to remove pipes that are not in use anymore, to remove the old electric system, because it's also not in use anymore and it's disconnected from the house bank. The starter batteries are not connected to the engine at the moment. So a lot of removing old unneeded stuff to get a better view, to get a better idea of what needs to be done and in which condition everything is. And in the spring we can start to overhaul the engine to remove the valve covers, have a look in the engine internals and see how the condition really is. We do expect that it's in really good condition because there's barely any smoke, which is pretty unusual for a DAF engine. Usually the smoke is hell, but this one doesn't. We do want to exchange all these hose connectors, all the gaskets, the V belts up in the front, just to give this engine a deep overhaul so we can rely on it for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Maybe a few more words about this engine. The reason why Flying Coney was converted into a sailing ship back in 1977 was that the old, huge, the industry diesel, it's a slow running engine, it's huge, it's really huge. This, this room is built for this large engine. Um, but this huge, large engine didn't work anymore. So uh, the boat was almost scrapped because of that, but then an artist came along and he had this idea of building a sailing ship. And he threw this old large engine out and bought a very reasonable DAF 1160, which was a very new engine at the time and a very efficient engine. And it makes our life so much easier and it's a really good and suitable engine for a sailing boat. And the good thing about it is it only has about 5,000 running hours, which is almost nothing. So there is really no chance for us to get at the end of the lifespan of this engine, speaking about running hours. The only issue with this engine is that over the last 20, 25 years, there really was a lack of maintenance in every aspect of this boat. We hope there will be no big damage internally to the engine. And after a little bit of love, it will run and bring us to nice destinations all around the world. Maybe one last word about the electric system. We do know we have to build it up from scratch or at the point where this electric system is, it's way easier to start from scratch instead of trying to fix an unsafe, unsecure, not up to code system. And we are almost sure that the 230 volt system caused a huge corrosion damage. So that's the reason why we have disconnected it and we're not using it anymore. But the first step is to remove all the cables, all the wires, uh, salvage the parts that are new and usable and throw away all the other stuff and starting from scratch and make a reliable, safe electric system. So as you can see, there are many tasks ahead of us. We're still a little bit sad that we won't leave Lelystad before this winter, but we will do our best to prepare the boat for the big journey next spring to the shipyard in Germany. Maybe one last thought about the boat. When we, 
were on the boat search two years ago, we never wanted to have a project boat. And we absolutely underestimated how much work this boat will be and how bad the condition actually is. But we already invested a lot of time into this boat and now after two years we really think that the hull and the shape is absolutely worth it but it's a lot of hard work and sometimes this this project is is really really tough our dream is to sail with flying coney with with a lot of people all around the globe so that means we are not building this sailing ship for just the two of us we're building it for the people so for the viewers, for our Patreons, that's the idea, that's the dream. But on the long run, it's only possible with the help of these people, because it's way too much work for just the two of us. So if you do want to get more involved, head over to Patreon, have a look there. If you can support this project, it would really mean a lot for us. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.